All right. The final topic for selection will be to go over a few more uh, common errors that you might make. So there are quite interesting errors that you you, know, you want to be aware of. Not necessarily you're you're not uh, you're not going to write it just by yourself, but maybe if your colleagues actually have to pass over their co uh, their work to you to take over in, in the workplace, you want to make sure you can also identify such errors uh, quickly. Okay, the first one here. Let's uh, study that. So let's now uh, read it first. Confusingly, braces, curly braces can be omitted if the if the uh, if the block for the branching contains only one single statement. What do I mean? Let's take a look at over here. Okay, it's again the simplest example to illustrate will be using the circle calculation uh, area of circle calculation. So here we say if the re if the input radius uh, that's read in is actually larger than or equal to zero, then we're going to print out the area like this. We we'll simply uh, put the uh, expression of calculation into the print statement over here. That's okay, right? You can think about this as like a numerical expression and then concatenate it with a string, which is allowed. Let's now think about uh, how this is actually interpreted by Java runtime or Java compiler. For now, uh, please only focus on this particular one here. This one here, I'll speak about it later. Okay, just only worry about this one here. Okay. The principle is uh, when you have only one single uh, statement here as the body for a particular branch, right? You can see this is a branch we are talking about. If, have, if you have only one single statement, you do not need to put any curly braces. However, I do highly recommend you put the braces all the time, even if it's only one line over here. Okay, so this will work. That's fine. Also, uh, it would be as if you actually put a curly brackets over here like this. It would be as if. Okay, the green and the pink they are equivalents. Okay, number one. All right. So that's the principle over here. You've got if you got only one line, uh, one line over here is going to be interpreted as. Uh, the only uh, the entire body of uh, implementation for the branch, but trouble can actually raise if you actually uh, are not cautious enough. Let's see why. Okay, let's now look at this program here below over here. Uh, you will see the same thing on the slides as well. Let's now illustrate right away. Let's say we still got our program over here, but now you can see we uh, according to the indentation, you can see we are we really meant these two lines should be the body of the implementation for this particular branch. However, are they really going to be actually treated as the body? The answer is no. All right. Because remember, we said before, if uh, there is no curly brackets, it will be as if there will be a st uh, starting curly brackets. And then the ending one will be simply just right after the first line. OK, so that means only this part will be interpreted as the body for the implementation for this branch. And this one here will be outside the if statement. All right, that's the uh, that's how you uh, look at that. Let me just be precise over here. We talk about this particular branch over here. And then since there's no curly brackets, so automatically this will be the line, the single line that will be counted as the body of implementation for that. So it will be as if we actually put this uh, let me just be careful here. It would be as if we actually put a curly bracket here, as if. Okay, like here and here. And what's going to go wrong? If I try that, let's try the input value over here. Let's say minus three over here. So from the user, it's simply going to read in uh, minus three. Okay, and area is simply going to be zero. So if I try that, uh, if I check this line here, minus three larger than or equal to zero is going to be false. So I'm going to bypass the body over here. However, I'm still going to execute this. And then what's going to be the area? It was going to be, say, zero. Rather than maybe printing out some error, or simply don't put any area to the output. Okay. So apparently, this is wrong output, right? When it's actually minus three. Because, again, let me say that again. Because when there is uh, no curly brackets, as you can see in the original question there, when there is no curly brackets, only the first line over here will be considered as the body for the implementation. So indentation over here does not help uh, the execution for your program. It never helps. All right. So how can we fix it? Right. Well, the best way to fix it would be put some explicit curly brackets. So now what about a fix? So the fix will be 
you want to put a curly bracket over here and then put a curly bracket over here. So this will be the fix. Okay, I try to put both uh, the fix, the pink one, and also what's really being interpreted if you didn't apply the fix, right? So I want to uh, look at both together, right? So this part over here would be the fix. And the green one over there is basically the green one the green one over there, let me just uh, put a comment over there. The green one will be interpretation by Java compiler. If curly brackets were missing, that's really the original problem we had. All right. OK, hopefully you got this, uh, this uh, problem over here. All right, so that's the first common mistake. Let's look at the second one. All right, you can read it over as well. Okay, your program might misbehave. Uh, I think this one, oh, you know what? Sorry about that. So this is just the one I just illustrated, right? So that's exactly what I just said, okay? I thought it's a new one, all right? That's exactly what I did. And the fix will be exactly, right? Put the uh, curly brackets over here. All right, next one. Common error number four over here, semicolon usually in Java really marks the end of a statement, the end, okay? So now take a look at this program over here. Do you see anything wrong? Well, I'm pretty sure if I didn't tell you this first, if I show you this code directly, it would be very difficult to spot what the error is, would it, would it, right? The error really is around here. Did you see that? All right, let's see what's gonna happen over here, okay? Let's switch to iPad, okay? Now you can see that uh, because uh, the semicolon here will really mark the end of some if statement. So you can see this one over here. So that means this is the entirety of the if statement over here. And then the rest, like here, and also here, so these two lines, do not belong to the if statement. They are not treated as the branch, but like the body for the implementation because of the semicolon. You can see just a symbol here can make such a huge difference. But computer, they have no flexibility. So you gotta be careful when you specify the syntax. Let me write it down first of all. So these two lines are not part of the if statements. Let's now see what the consequence is if we actually mistakenly put this semicolon over here. Let's try. Uh, let's try the value over here. Let's say again, let's say minus four, okay? So what we will do is we're gonna say minus four larger than or equal to zero is going to be false. However, this is like a single, you can think about, this is actually even shorter than, you know, remember we said that what's the minimum if statement you could write? You can say if, for example, uh, radius larger than or equal to zero, and then you can put something over here. This one here is actually even shorter because that one there is simply just checking the condition without doing anything. Even uh, doesn't matter if the condition is true or false. Doesn't matter because it's kind of end uh, it ends itself right away with a semicolon here. So you can think about this uh, this guy over here. This guy over here is somehow equivalent to this guy over here. You simply just say do nothing. You can think about these two are equi uh, equivalents. Okay, this one here and this one here they are equivalent. All right, let's see what the consequence is. Since the if statement already ended over here, so that means uh, these two lines will just be executed unconditionally. So we will still try to say radius times radius. So we'll still do uh, minus four multiply minus four multiply pi. Uh, sorry, multiply the pi, and then it's, it's still going to print out some area over here, but it's wrong because for minus four, we shouldn't do anything or we should really print out an error. We shouldn't really uh, just say area is minus four times minus four, which would be 16. Actually, that would be very misleading uh, output, right? All right, so that's about what you want to watch out for, right? So if you got some misplaced semicolon, uh, you will mistakenly end it, uh, you will mistakenly end this uh, if statement here prematurely, all right? That's about this common error over here, all right? 
Okay, uh, common error number five. Okay, so this is somehow related to uh, the GPA example we did uh, last week. Okay, let me talk about this one specifically, and then I'll try to draw some connection to last time. You can also hyperlink uh, to the previous slide. Okay, I'll show it to you. This example here, let's now switch the iPad right away. So now, if I didn't tell you what error it is, can you actually know what error it is? Just by looking at the code over here, this fragment of code. Okay, I would suggest pause the video for a minute or two, uh, and try to see if you can come up with some justification. This will help you uh, actually take the uh, either the written test or maybe the exam later. Okay, I will highly recommend. All right, assuming that you have thought about it, uh, let's see what's going on over here. So what's happening over here is you can see we got a single if statement here without the else. All right, let's uh, make that observation first. You can see this part over here. This is a single if statement without the else. A single if statements without and else. Else simply simply not there. And let's see what the consequence is. And you want, uh, if there's simply no else, you better make sure you really have covered all the possible input value that might go through this particular if statement, if that's really what, what, you, what you meant to do, right? Especially, so now since we talk about GPA, you want to make sure all the possible GPA can be calculated correctly. And you can see initially, uh, graduate with is simply just empty string. So we do expect some proper value to be assigned to graduate with. So let me talk about a, a branching condition first. The first one, larger than uh, or equal to 4.5. Okay, it's this guy over here. The second one, uh, larger than or equal to four, it's actually this guy over here. Okay, and then the third one, larger than or equal to 3.5, it's this guy over here. Okay, and then what about the fourth one? Uh, let's say the uh, uh, orange, larger than or equal to 2.5, it's exactly over here. All right. Let's see if I can just move this a little bit to uh, the right. So you wouldn't get confused with the remark I just wrote down. Okay. Over here. That's good. Okay. Do you see any trouble over here? Visually speaking, hopefully that's easy to see. What if the value comes from a value that's strictly less than 2.5, but larger than zero? For example, what if the GPA is 2.3? Then what would be the, how should a student graduate with? Well, you can say the student maybe fell or whatever, but currently let's try this. Or I just got another value here, 1.5, similar. You can see 1.5 is going to satisfy neither of the branching conditions over here. By the way, you can see this is the most general one, right? And that's the most specific one. Since like we are really arranging from the most specific to most the most general, which we spoke about, that part is actually okay, right? Let's see this. If I try 1.5 over here, it's going to satisfy, uh, it's not going to satisfy this. No, right, it's gonna bypass. And also 1.5, not larger than or equal to four, also gonna bypass this. And also 1.5, larger than or equal to th uh, 3.5, also bypass. And also 1.5, larger than or equal to 2.5, is also false, bypass. Which means uh, the initial value here being empty string will not be reassigned over here. Right? That's the trouble. Okay? Understanding what error is is actually more important than you will see uh, how, how it should be fixed. Well, maybe equally important, I should say. So now, how do we fix this? There are two ways you can fix this. Okay? Uh, let me uh, sketch them very quickly, and then I'll uh, switch back to the slides. Either you can say else over here, and then you can say graduate with is simply uh, reassigned to maybe, uh, maybe F or fail. That'll be solution number one. Okay, just put an else part. Let's say solution number two. You really don't want to put an else part. In that case, you may just want to change this default value to be f, which means if there's nothing that's more accurate than f to assign to the student here, then the student should really get an f to fail. All right. So that's uh, the two solutions. But don't worry. Uh, it's really written down over here on the slide, so you can take a look. Okay, over here, and then. Specifically for uh, this solution over here to have the initial value uh, to fail, right? 
that really correspond to if you compare this example with slide number 34. So if you are using the slides, the PDF, click on this link over here and then you will see over here. So this is slide number 34 over here. And then you can see the default value is simply just F. So even if we don't have a, uh, an explicit else, in this case, that's okay, right? So we will still make sure, let's say if the value is simply 35, let's say let, uh, the letter grade should be F by default, right? It wouldn't be reassigned to either C or B or A. Right? That's a connection I'll like to draw you to, right? And to go back, uh, just go back to 56, all right? Okay, over here. So now we are back to 56. All right, so that's about this comment error here. I hope, I hope you're okay. Let's go for the next one. The next one is very interesting uh, error over here, okay? Very interesting one. Okay, uh, this one here, it's so-called ambiguous else. Another word for this, a uh, very famous uh, construct over here we're making is called dangling else. Just for your knowledge, it's called dangling else. Dangling else. Meaning that somehow the else part is not it's uh, hard to say which uh, which if the else part belongs to. Okay, let me just tell you, and then we'll, we'll illustrate that to see why it is ambiguous. Okay, you can see we got if, if, we got else. According to the indentation, it seems like we want to say the else part over here should be part of this if. That seems to be what you meant to say. However, remember this, indentation is only for human being, for the readability for human being. However, indentation makes no difference to the computer. All right? So there are two ways to really interpret the else over here, right? Either we can say uh, if, and then we got else. And then the inner if is simply just a nested if over here. That's what. That's the first way to interpret that. The second way to do it is to say we got if over here, right? So that's the if without the else. And then the inner, the body for this uh, orange if over here is just another if and also else, right? You can think, well, I cannot really do this on an iPad, but I can think about it's going to shift the indentation a little bit to the right to be uh, at the same level as this if over here. You can think about that. That's what you can do, right? To make the indentation just for human being. But for the computer, it doesn't matter, all right? So you can see we, now we got two versions for interpretation. Either uh, version number one, or version number two. Let's see very quickly for the same input value 20 over here, okay, for the same. Now, if I try 20 over here, 20 larger than or equal to zero is actually true, meaning that I will go here and then I'll bypass this right away, right? So 20 larger than uh, 100 is actually false, meaning that I'm simply just going to uh, skip the else over here and then just do nothing. So the uh, the output is simply just nothing. Okay, you can think about output to the console is simply nothing over here. On the other hand, for the second version here, if I got 20 over here, so now 20 uh, larger than or equal to zero is going to be true. Bypass, uh, uh, bypass the else, but there's no else, right? And then we're going to go into the inner body over here, which is just another if else statement here. And then uh, 20 larger than 100 is going to be false, meaning that we're going to bypass this part here, but we're going to go into the else, right? Because the else over here belongs to the if over here. So now we're going to print out x is negative, all right? So this is actually going to be printed out. So in the console over there, you're going to see uh, x is uh, negative, all right? So you can see, uh, based on de depending on which interpretation you go for, you can have different output, right? And if you simply write this uh, in your uh, in your program, right? Wh which one is going to be taken by the computer? It turns out this will be the version that will be uh, taken by the Java compiler by default. However, you don't really want to memorize this, right? That's something I want to say. Okay. So now, how can we fix this? To really fix this, it seems like this is more applicable for us to uh, to adopt because 20 uh, is simply neither larger than 100 nor negative. So that means uh, just nothing as opposed to simply saying uh, 20 is actually negative, right? So now how can we make it better? To make it better, uh, basically uh, you will see in the slides, 
let me just explain that very quickly over here. To make it better, uh, you know what? Let me just put it here right away to see the fix. To fix it, you rather say something like this. You rather put uh, the curly bracket over here. You can see one over here and also one over here as, as well. So this will make sure you actually properly enclose this if over here inside. The orange if over there. So this will make sure you do that. All right. So this will be the fix uh, to add by adding the uh, curly brackets. But if you didn't do it, then you're going to uh, suffer from the ambiguity or dangling else problem over here. In that case, having the same input will give you two different results. Right. But you want to be aware of this problem here. You might be tested with this. All right. OK, so you can also uh, read about the uh, slides over here. That's also something I spoke about. Okay, finally, uh, okay, that's about the fix I spoke about, right? You just add by adding this uh, curly brackets to disambiguate uh, the meaning for the if statement. So that means this part should really be a nested inside the body for uh, this branch over here. Okay, the final one to talk about is really about how you can, so here I call them pitfall. Pit, pitfall simply means they're not really error, but something you can do better. Okay, so I got two examples to show you about Boolean expression. I'll talk about them very quickly, and then we are done Okay, for selection. And then we'll move on to loops for the rest of uh, this week. So I put the two examples here together. Again, I said it's pitfall, meaning that you might write this code without suffering from any uh, errors in your program. However, you do want to consider making your code easier to write. Okay, The first example over here, you can see we say, we say boolean is even. Okay, we declare some variable over here is even. It is true if it's an even number. It is false if it's an odd number. Okay, so here we say if the number we are reading modulo two is equal to zero, then that means is even should be assigned to true. Otherwise, it should be assigned to false. I would say this works well perfectly. However, why don't we simplify this into boolean over here is even is simply reassigned to number modulo 2 equals equals 0. This will be what I suggested, OK? You can see here, you can see if this expression is true, you're going to assign it true. You're going to assign true to the is even. Otherwise, you assign false. So it wouldn't be just the same as you just assign the truthfulness for this expression directly to is even, right? So that's a difference, right? Syntactically, however, semantically we are really doing the same thing. So this expression here is just equivalent to this block of code over here. So you really want to see uh, what well, you really want to get used to maybe writing this instead. Okay, that's one example I want to show you. Another example over here is we want to say let's say if is even is equal to false. Let's say is even is a boolean value, right? Just an independent program. If that's false, then we'll say it's an odd number. Otherwise, an even number. Okay, this part here is okay. However, I would suggest one possible improvement over here to make it more uh, like a simpler. Okay, I would say this one here is really equivalent to not the case is even. Okay, let's see why. Okay, now you can simply just try to uh, do a little bit of uh, truth table over here. Okay, I'll put it here. Okay, let's put is even over here. Is even is actually a Boolean value, so it can be either true or false, right? So that's a table with a two rows over here. And let's talk about the two expressions over here. And the one we want to that the one we had originally uh, is even equals equals false. Let me move this a little bit to the right over here. Okay, just over here. Is even equals equals false, and then the one I, the one I want you to simplify into is not is even over here. Okay, so not is even. Okay, so let me move that a little bit uh, to here, and then I will uh, complete truth table for you quickly. Okay, let's see this. In the case where is even is simply just true. Okay, so now true equals equals false is going to give you false 
Agree? And also, true, not the case, true. Remember the, the rule for negation operator. So not the case, true will be also give you false. You can see for the first case, they actually got matching result over here. Okay. What about in the case it is false? So now you got is even false equals equals false will give you true, right? And also not the case, false will give you true. Right? So in this case, we also match the result over here. So these two expressions are really equivalents, right? So now how to write it will be completely up to you. Either you can write it this way, or you can write it this way, but they're really equivalent. Is even if is even is really equal to false, that simply means is even is not the case. That's how you can think of it intuitively. All right, so I already uh, give you this, these two examples. These are the ones I, I normally see the beginner Java programmers uh, actually make such a unnecessarily complicated uh, code or expression, but hopefully you can move on to uh, be more uh, efficient uh, when you actually write a code, to be uh, uh, neater when you actually write a code. All right, so that's about the end of uh, the selections lecture. Uh, let me just go all the way to the end. Uh, Beyond this lecture here, there's something I already spoke about in the very beginning uh, in, in this particular lecture. So you, sh you should really try to play with the examples uh, I, I made available to you and also whatever that remains that was not really uh, mentioned in the in the important uh, projects. And also you should really, uh, they, there will be some motivating example for you to solve in slide number five. And also highly recommend it uh, if you can just do a uh, video 10 to 7 from the previous Java tutorial video and then try to use debugger to really practice your example as much as possible. That'll be my uh, tip for you to study for this lecture here. All right, so we're going to move on to the loops lecture for the rest of the week.